when you think about how culture is created, it's actually a pretty simple loop. People have experiences in their lives around them. Those experiences basically communicate assumptions about what's valued, what's not valued, what's good behavior, what's bad behavior. And then those assumptions, people go with those assumptions in terms of what they should do so they behave according to the, those assumptions. So it's a cycle. It's a simple cycle. So how do you get more innovation? How do you get less resistance? Or how do you get you know, risk taking? You change experiences for people. You change experiences very consciously. And so really, when you think about creating a culture of innovation, it's really about thinking very consciously about the kinds of things you can do to change people's experiences so you get more innovation. And so the, that's really what we're talking about. So how many of you have ever been in meetings and somebody throws out an idea and you hear, we tried that before 10 years ago. Well, we don't have time to innovate. Innovation is just not rewarded around here. Those are the things that shape assumptions about, do we really want ideas? Are we going to do anything with those ideas? And then shape behavior, because if you hear that over and over again, no one's even going to share an idea. So those are, that's the kind of dynamic I'm talking about. Here's an example. Here's an example around how very subtle things can stifle innovation. And then I'm going to share with you the whole flip side around a whole bunch of things you can do to get more innovation. So I was working with a client. They asked me to come in and assess their innovation culture, do a bunch of interviews, survey, talk to people, and figure out why we're not getting the kind of innovation we want to get. So did that, and I heard a story over and over again. One of the stories was, you go, this was a company that where people would go out and kind of in the field, they'd, buy, they'd have to buy lunch because they'd be out all day, and then they'd come back and they'd submit, you know, a, the, this is a real example, they'd submit a receipt for the ham sandwich they bought. So they'd go, and they'd submit the receipt, and their processes had kind of evolved over time into kind of this, this black hole. So what happened was people would submit their receipt to their manager. They'd kind of have to fill out this form, sign it. Their manager would look at it, sign it, give it back to the employee who would then submit it to finance, who then would go through like a couple steps in finance, get it back to the manager who would you know, see the approval. Then they'd hand it back to the employee, and the employee would then need to go to the petty cash person who was open for one hour a week during to, so you get reimbursed for your ham sandwich. So that was just kind of, there's another term, you know, it's just the way things are done around here. It was kind of accepted that that's just the way things were done around here. Well, the person who told me the ham sandwich story said to me, if I can't be trusted with re getting reimbursed for a ham sandwich, why should I trust leadership with my ideas? So the ham sandwich reimbursement was getting in the way of innovation, basically, which is kind of sounds silly. But those are the subtle little things that can get in the way of innovation. So the question is, how do you identify those things? And that, that organization dealt with it and then is doing other things to get more innovation.